several years after the Great Famine in Ireland, there was a wealthy farmer, and he was working hard, toiling in the fields, bringing in the last harvest of the year. But the work that he was doing was really more of a supervisory capacity. He had hired many of the labourers and farmhands from the town, and they were all doing the actual reaping of the grain and gathering of the crops, while he would watch and make sure they were all doing their jobs correctly. And with all of this hard labour upon his back on that warm, warm day, he began to feel quite sleepy, and he thought to himself, you know, there's that spot in the backfield. There's some lovely shady trees, some nice soft grass, and a lovely little stream running past. I think I'll go there, and I'll, I'll rest my eyes for a moment, and then I'll get back to work. So he goes down to the backfield, and he lays down on the soft grass, under the shady trees, by the little stream. And four hours later, he wakes up. And he wakes up with a terrible, fearsome hunger, like he hadn't eaten all day. So he ran back to his house. And he went inside, he saw his wife, and he demands, Wife, where is my dinner? Is there any dear dinner ready? I am starving. Where have you been all day? We've been looking for you. I was just, I just went out to the backfield to have a little bit of a lie down and I accidentally fell asleep. But I am so hungry, please help me. So the wife, there was some dinner left over. She went and fetched it. There were some potatoes. There was some nice bacon and cabbage, a very traditional Irish meal. And so he eats as much as he, as he can. He eats every scrap of what's on his plate, licks it clean. And the wife asks, do you feel better now? You don't know what's wrong, but I feel worse after having eaten. I feel even more hungry than I did before. Well, maybe you're not hungry at all, says the wife. Maybe you're sick. Why don't you go and have a lie down, go to sleep, and if you're not feeling better in the morning, we'll call the doctor. So he goes and he does this. He goes to bed. And the next morning, he felt much worse. He felt like he hadn't eaten in at least a week. So they called for the doctor. And the doctor came and examined him and took a look at him. He said, there's, there's nothing wrong with you at all. I, I can't imagine why you're feeling so sick. But listen, take some of this medicine. I'm sure it'll sort things out. If it doesn't, if you don't feel better tomorrow, call me back again. So the farmer, he takes the medicine the doctor gave him. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. In fact, he's getting worse. He doesn't just feel hungry now. He can feel something moving, wriggling, writhing inside him and he can hear sounds. Like tiny, rapid little footsteps. Like something scurrying around in his guts. And the next morning, they call for the doctor again. And the doctor examines him and says, there's, there's nothing wrong with you. Do you. There's nothing wrong with me. Do you not hear the sound of something moving around in there? Listen, all I can hear through my stethoscope is your heart, your lungs, and the gurgling of your stomach. That's all it is. So the doctor left. And over the next few weeks, they called in doctors from all over the country and not one of them could help. And they spent so much of their money, they had to start selling off some of the cattle, they had to start selling off some of the sheep, until they had actually very little left. And still, they couldn't fix him, they couldn't find out what was wrong with him. And one night, a vagrant came and asked permission to sleep in their barn. And he was given this. Now, he overheard two of the farmhands talking about what was happening to the farmer. And he thought to himself, oh, this sounds familiar. So he went and knocked on the door of the house. And when the wife answered, he said, I'm sorry to trespass on your time, but I've heard about what's happening with your husband. 
Now, I think I might know what's wrong with him. Is it all right if I come in and talk to him? And the wife, at this stage, they've seen dozens of doctors. Nothing has helped. She thinks they may as well. At least this one's free. So they, she brings him upstairs. And he starts talking to the husband. So you feel hungry. Starving no matter how much you eat. Am I right? You are. That's, that's entirely correct. And you've been wasting away here. I can see now your chest, it looks like a toast rack with tissue paper over it. And that's started happening along with the hunger. Am I right? You're, you're absolutely correct. That's entirely true. Now let me ask you one last thing. Did you, before all this started, did you lie down in either wet grass or by a stream. Yes, yes I did. I laid down by the stream in the back field. I think I know what this is. And I know how to fix it. So he turns to the wife and he says, We need every piece of bacon. Every piece of salted meat you can find. Bring it all here. Bring it all to me now and cook it. Have it ready. So the wife, she's very confused, but she does what he says because he's speaking very authoritatively. And she runs off into town. She buys all the bacon at the butcher's. She buys all the bacon at the grocer's. She brings it all back and has it all cooked. And it's all piled up high on a big plate. And they bring it up to the farmer's room. And the vagrant says, eat every single bite of that, eat. All of it, don't leave a single crumb behind. And the farmer, he had so wasted and famished and threadbare and bone thin. He had trouble swallowing, he had trouble chewing, he had trouble even sitting up to eat this meal. He choked down as much as he could and every part of it hurt. But the vagrant said, no, keep going, eat more, eat more, eat more. He kept trying, desperately, desperately wanting a drink which the vagrant would not let him have. Until finally, the vagrant was happy he'd had enough. Now listen, there's one more step to this. I need you to come with me back down to that stream. You can have whoever you want to help you down, just, just we need to go there. So they summoned two of the farmhands to help the farmer get up out of the bed make his way down the stairs and go to the stream in the backfield. The vagrant has him lie on his belly with his head overhanging the stream. And he says to wait. And they were waiting there almost an hour, all worried that nothing was going to happen, worried that this wasn't going to work. Nobody but the vagrant knowing what was going on at all until the farmer felt something moving in his gut and he could feel the little steps of tiny feet advance up his esophagus, up through his throat. He could feel tiny little feet on his tongue and a little creature, like a little newt, stood there on the tip of his tongue staring into the stream, panting as if in desperate thirst. And it leaned out and it leaned out and it leaned out. And it ran back in as if in fright. And it did this five or six times before finally it crept out to the very edge of the tip of his tongue and jumped into the stream. And the farmer he made to get up, but the vagrant said, no, you lay back down. That was only the first one. Over the next hour, 12 of these tiny little creatures, these tiny little newts, crept out of the farmer's stomach, up through his throat, onto his tongue, and then leapt into the stream. When the last one had descended into the water with a plop, the farmer made to get up again and the vagrant said, no, you lay back down. They were just the young. 
we still need to wait for their mother. The first one that got in there. And the farmer lay back down. And after nearly two hours, everyone was worried. Even the vagrant wasn't sure he'd done enough, thought maybe he'd gotten it wrong, that the farmer needed more bacon. But eventually, the farmer finally felt a horrible wrench in his gut. And something huge, with much larger feet, came creeping up his esophagus, straining it, bulging it. They could see the bulge in his throat as it passed through there. And its snout, almost as big as the farmer's mouth itself, pushed its way out. And its little feet poked out from the corners of his lips, pulling on them to pull itself out of his mouth, straight into the stream. So the vagrant and the farmhands, they helped the farmer up. And they led him back to the farmhouse. It took him three months of eating hearty meals to recover his health. And it took years and years for him to recover the wealth of his farm. And finally, he was all right again. But he never, ever slept by a stream or in wet grass again for fear of that creature, for fear of the Alp Luacra.